Hey chaps and welcome back to another fantastic XA Coupe Guy episode where we are in Graham's Restorations which is my business that I run here in little old South Australia. Um, first off, first cab off the rank is, um, I know the Commodore stuff hasn't been super exciting to a lot of people but it has to me and it's um, just something I like to share. It is progressing along very nicely. I've repaired the guard, got the new bar trial fitted and I'll show you how the quarter panel turned out uh, in a GIF. Uh, we've been progressing along with the XC wagon um, without filming because um, if anybody who's got kids will know that they are a fantastic way of ruining your plans. Um, I used to say that if you had plans and they were solid, when kids come along, your pl plans sort of turn to sort of a more of a jello mesh that sort of falls over really easily so that you know kids can do that to you um only parents will sort of understand that one um and kids that are teething that's a fantastic way to ruin a good night's sleep for three days in a row so obviously uh, i didn't really feel like filming <laughs> but here i am back again um so basically all i did was just work and then and I know I'll just sort of wait till I feel a bit better to do some filming and be in front of the camera. <laughs> um, but yes, you might notice, enough ramblings, um, I have some Fat Fords merchandise. First cab off the rank, I feel like I am. Um, my good buddy from that channel, he uh, sent me some and I am absolutely wrapped. They actually uh, look and feel real nice. Um, be sure to go subscribe to his channel and check out his videos because what he is doing to that car is just mind-blowing. It is the quality of the work is incredible. The build is awesome. Uh, it's going to be better than most of the other stuff that's being done on YouTube in Australia, I reckon. My personal favourite because it's just he's doing something that nobody else has done, as in put a Mustang floor pan, driveline, all that good stuff. Um, and grafted into a Falcon Coupe. It's just incredible. So, um, enough chit chat. We'll catch you up on what we've been up to in the shop. So, chaps, uh, this is the Commodore that is now reassembled. And I cannot believe this. And I've been told by a few painters that Prussian steel, which is this colour, is quite up there as an incredibly hard colour to match. Now I've had three different lots of this colour mixed up off that fuel flap and each one of them is different. Um, so I'm at the point where I've just gone, well I'm not repainting it again. So um, if I get if I get real annoyed by the colour, and you can actually see it quite a bit in here, it's like it's not green enough or something. But I went from, so I had my little card mixed up which is this little tin, which they gave me a sample so they could mix it up. So the first tin of two litres was way too dark. It was like night, it was like black. And then the second lot, which is this little tin, which I reckon was pretty much bang on. Um, they were like, yep, cool. All right, now we know what to do. Then they mixed up this third lot, which is another lot. So that's the stuff I actually painted it with. Has ended up being too light, so I'm like, why do I have three different variants? I'm not a colour matcher. I, it's, I don't see any colour matching equipment in here, so I can't really spend my life doing that. So I've got a tiny bit that's right, a quite a bit that's wrong, and another quite a bit that's wrong. Um, so I can't really win at the moment with this colour. If it annoys me too much, what I'll do is I will blend this door. I will just take the handle and the moulding out back mask it, fix a tiny dent there and just throw this colour into the door and solve it that way. The stupid thing is the colour match is nigh on perfect between the roof skin and this paint. So I'm, well I've also, you know, once you're in the crash game you sort of can spot repairs a mile away. To the trained eye they stick out like sore thumb. So I'm starting to think that this particular variant might be correct. Uh, mainly because it seems to match the roof and I know the roof hasn't been painted surprisingly uh, but I know for a fact looking at the car that the there's a squeeze past that 
this quarter panel's been painted and you can pick it by if I zoom right in you can just see there's a little speck of trash in it and there it's really only people in the crash game will be able to spot it unfortunately but it's got trash in it and um, the factory don't really get that much trash in their paint um, you can just see it's all peppered through here so this has been painted I know this door has been off just because I saw the bolts were loose and I fixed them and it's not quite aligned up probably um, after playing with the front guard the front bar I know that that front guard has been painted so I have to naturally assume judging by paint over the chips that this door has also been painted so this whole entire side has been painted I know that the rear bar that came off had been painted so now we're talking a good chunk of the car I don't know if the boot I think the boot lid is still original just by the mind numbing amount of scratches although there is a couple of bits of trash in it so I'm thinking the boot lid's been painted but being an ex-police car uh, it's kind of not surprising but I'm pretty darn sure the roof hasn't been done so I'm starting to think that this car is 17 shades of the right color or the same color should I say so we're running into a bit of a problem there so color match this car's just unfortunately gonna be all over the shop like a mad woman's breakfast so my only real saving grace is to prep this door and throw a bit of color into it if it bothers me enough luckily I'm going to only throw color sort of over here so we won't have a mismatch issue like we do here with the bonnet and the guard and the door so that's at least a bonus front bar fits okay for a aftermarket knockoff I actually spent a bunch of time yeah, took the old bar off worked out that the Rio had only two of the six bolts holding it on and they weren't exactly tight two of the heat the shields that go in here missing the washer bottle which is that guy through there was broken hanging down that tube wasn't plugged in the two little lines that go on this end weren't hooked up and the electrical connector wasn't connected so it was literally doing nothing in there um, and then I was like hooked it all back up put it in the right spot and filled it full of water and it just come gushing out I was like well that's stuffed also this big air dam that when I got the car was on the back seat I've now actually installed because it goes behind that Rio and the washer bottle bolts through it to the Rio and to the front of the car so it's a bit of a mixed bag of fish what you can do with these ones if you take the front bar off there's a couple of connectors underneath the fuse box area and you can take the bolts out um, if all the bolts are in there you can take the bolts out and walk the entire front off this car with all of you just got to disconnect a couple of hoses and you can walk the whole front off the car with all the radiators fans condensers everything all the wiring everything hooked up because I've done that on a VE once it was quite handy um, makes for a very quick front end removal and then of course we got to the front bar where this is just floating loose in it where it's supposed to be mounted to it the two sensors that go in the front here um, when it was on the car I was like where are the two sensors in the middle they were sort of tucked down in the bottom one of them was missing the little gasket that goes around it but luckily um, Holden's had those so I got that and that's back in so I've sort of reassembled this back to how it's supposed to be and then when it comes time to reassemble it into the other all the guts into the other one I'll make sure it's all right so you know more issues but obviously a car yardy monkey or something like that has got to this car in the front end also the EJ that um, was the first one is not exactly a car anymore and I'm not going to show it because some people might get sick it's in a lot of parts it's been chopped up quite spectacularly um, I've got the quarter panel on marketplace I just put the boot floor on marketplace so that if they're useful to anybody else for their restos um, I've just I've kept a couple of bits for myself 
but the rest will probably just go to scrap. So probably during the day at some point I'll quickly prime that up, just to, and that'll be done. And then all I gotta do is rub the guard down, plastic prime the bar, paint the pair of them, and we're golden. And hoping the colour is correct. Or at least, should I say, hoping that the colour is going to match here to here. My other thought pattern was to, and you can see that that's very peely right there on the guard. My other thought pattern was to just prep that guard and uh, just throw a little bit of base coat into the guard and then re clear it. But that's just adding tasks to things. Also, this is a fantastic product for prepping paint. Um, this and a grey scotch bright makes dulling paint for new paint jobs real easy. Ironically it smells like a urinal cake. <laughs> but it's really good stuff. Um, and back to the wagon, which we'll be working on today. We have been creating. So I've already replaced this section through here. Um, I've also had to make this section through here. Uh, just got a lot of rebuilding to do on this car because it's all just rusted. Yeah, there's the bit that came out of the bottom of that. Just gone all the way across. So that bit was there. And unfortunately my um, middle folder can't fold massively long bits so I have to do it in sections. But um, that's coming along quite nicely. So effectively from here to here, it's all good. I've just got to weld it. I've been welding, grinding, welding, grinding, welding, grinding till it's all good. Hoping I don't warp it too much. Also thought to myself that this panel has just the ever so slightest curve in it. It's like it's, I don't know, it's hard to describe, but it looks like it's got a, a big curve in it. Um, but I could be wrong, it could be just an optical illusion, but it kind of looks like that. So we're going to hopefully finish this today and put some more bits in this corner. So it's all progressing along quite nicely. I went back and watched one of my older videos from back when I had about 400 subscribers. And I thought, gee, I actually must do... Um, I showed a bit more detail in my repairs. Um, I was more in depth and I was like, hmm, maybe I should get back to that. Um, so I might do a bit more of that and get right back into the nitty gritties of it. As you've just seen there, I've been tacking this back together. Um, unfortunately, when welding something like this where it's two flat bits, it's gonna unfortunately dip in a little bit. It's just how welds work. It either dips down or it dips up. It's sort of, especially when you're doing flat areas because it pulls steel together. So unfortunately, as you if you weld on the top here, it's pulling steel from this side and it's pulling steel from this side and it's pulling them together which ends up kicking it up at either end. So your only real course of action is to grind them back and then hammer and dolly them as flat as you can afterwards. But unfortunately, with something being super rusty like this, um, uh, miracles are sometimes mm, sort of, they're done, but uh, the only way to truly get this right, it would be to potentially TIG weld it, which I don't have, unfortunately. I will one day, but I won't. Don't have one now. Is TIG weld it, and then you can tap it up and metal finish it a lot nicer with those, because it's very hard to metal finish uh, MIG welds, because of how the weld happens. Um, because it's superheated really fast, it becomes really hard. Um, uh, and this stuff doesn't. Whereas if you heat it up slowly and all together, it is, um, it just, it's, it's hard to describe, but it's different and it's much easier. It all has the same sort of uh, molecular structure almost, where it's very, it's still malleable rather than having a super hard section. Um, hard to describe, but if you went through trade school, you'd understand. Um, but it's very hard to metal finish 
MIG welds, but TIG welding is quite easy to metal finish because it's all done not quite nicely. Same with oxy welding. Oxy welding is very similar to TIG welding. If you can oxy weld, you can TIG weld because um, oxy is making a, a molten pool with a flame and uh, TIG is using a molten pool with an electrical arc. So same exact you know puddle and filler rod sort of situation whereas MIG welding is probably one of the easiest and most idiot proof methods of welding there is because it pretty much does it all for you as long as you sort of know how to set up your machine. I'd also always recommend use a gas MIG. Um, I started out with a gasless but when I went to gas I never ever went back and you just end up with a much much nicer looking weld. Um, gasless the flux is what protects the weld and it just splatters and does all sorts of junky stuff which is why you have to wire wheel them and all that junk whereas when you use gas the argon protects the weld from the impurities in the air and stuff and it ends up if you don't have the gas um, all the molten metal gets all the well, oxygen in it and it stuffs them up and then you end up with a very very porous weld whereas if it's being shielded by the argon which is the shielding gas it um, lets the metal become a solid item before oxygen gets to it if that makes sense hard to describe and I may be getting it slightly wrong but I'm just going off what I was taught and um, yeah so we're progressing along nicely I'm hoping to have this piece done and maybe that next piece in by the end of this video ultimately by the end of the week I'd like to have this back in here because all of this is done that's only a couple of pieces to go back in and then re repair the whole front lip and do a couple of patches on that end so it's not impossible to achieve but we'll just keep plodding along and I'll try and get you some more sort of time lapsey goodness so what I've been doing is I just welded up a little split that was through here I used my uh, wonderful uh, old padlock which is um, it's funny uh, brass and copper can conduct welds um, conduct electricity obviously but welds will not stick to it um, something like non porous and porous metals so that's they're really handy for filling up holes or uh, making you know doing your repairs and stuff where you don't want to put a whole piece in so I put this through fix this bit because it's actually solid right there that way I can just do basically a square for this one super easy and then I can do another square with a light fold through it do that one and then we can have this side done and then we're going to progress through the middle the problem we're going to have later on so we get to about here is the car has taken a little bit of a smack in the tush at some point and some of this isn't exactly in the right shape so what I'm going to do is copy that which I made which is all lovely and just probably put at least another section in here and get rid of that janky middle bit and um, probably tomorrow when I tackle this I'll get my oxy set and I'll just play with the heat and push this area down a little bit and then we can keep cracking on but I'll get this bit done and then we'll catch up in a second so as you can see this is a pretty basic repair actually it's probably one of the simplest ones you could ever shake a stick at um, I was actually going to film doing it but one of the neighbors in the fellow units had a radio going that was spectacularly loud and I know from past experience that if you have a radio going you can't monetize your videos because of copyrights so that's something to watch out for if you're doing a YouTube watch out for non copyrighted music even radios playing in the background that'll get you done um, so unfortunately I had to mix that bit but it couldn't really be simpler um, all you gotta do is well, cut the rust out put it on a fresh piece of tin and I was lucky enough I had a nice piece of leftover that I could just go zip zip and then drop it in and then tack 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 and obviously I shall keep going until that's welded in and boom the most basic rust repair you could ever shake a stick at and obviously then we'll clean down the welds and then tackle this one and then we will move on 
and upward. And then what I'll do is I'll show you through folding up the piece for there for here too um, because that's a bit of a fun one and I do think after studying this panel for a long time this whole panel is ever so slightly curved I don't think that's from the accident I think it's actually designed like that these two folds um, are ever so slightly curved I don't know whether that why that is but maybe it's just a design but I don't know <laughs> either way it's going back in here in a couple of days so keep running through it what I'm going to do now is tack through up all my gaps grind it flat and then quite literally cut and trim the same exact thing out of there and then progress along and we'll catch you up in a jiffy Hopefully if I've done my time lapsing correctly you would have just seen me weld this lovely little piece in and it's come up quite well. Now we're going to move on to doing this midsection here. Basically all I've got to do is redo this piece for here and then cut a little, well, I guess it's a little square out of it really, um, and make that. So we need to first off work out, probably wouldn't be a bad idea to measure how wide that folder is going to be able to do and go from here to here so we need to copy these if this wasn't bent in the middle I probably wouldn't um, replace it but it's uh, just a bit too sad for my likings and it does have a little baby rust hole in it so this is the last bit we're going to fix on there and then we can we'll probably have to wrap up the video there because it'll be stupidly long and then we can, in the next one, we'll finish off that bit and put this in and then that'll wrap up this whole back section. So that'll be quite nice. I'll go fold, cut a piece and then we can show you the foldingness. So traps, um, I'm up to folding this next piece. I've trimmed it, well, cut it out anyway. Um, fairly straightforward, made sure I had a, hmm, must have spilled some clear on that. Make sure I had a straight edge. Now, you don't really want to have a nice crisp fold on that particular piece because it's not actually it's a subtle fold so the best bit to do is mark out where the center of that uh, radius of the curve is and then do a few light folds now what you want to do is make sure it's really good on your scribed line just lightly do that and just crack it slightly and now we want to move it out a smidgen it's French for smidgen make sure it's still very much centered clamp it back down and crack it some more now the folder <laughs> Being a Paramount Browns one and coming from not Australia, it's not the world's greatest folder. I mean, it's certainly um, better than trying to fold it on a vise, but I've found that sort of the longer your piece you do, the less crisp it is through the middle, if that makes sense. You can tell that it's, you know, get what you pay for. <laughs> Let's take that out there and you see we've got a starting to subtly fold. Now I need to go this way so I can go the other way and put a bit of a fold on the other side steady and I mean in the old classics if I get this wrong guess what I gotta do I gotta do it again but I don't think I am getting it wrong but only time will tell <sighs> my hearty sir I'm gonna use my tummy there you go who said a fat guy wasn't a great thing to have see we're starting to make quite a nice uh, soft curve now this is where you go back and compare it which is what I'm going to do and then I'll catch you up in a second this is where profile gauges absolutely win out hands down actually I'll use this on the front guard of the Commodore where 
you walk around and compare it, you sort of squash it into one wheel arch that's good, walk around the other side and make sure it's perfect, but you can see that we need to fold it possibly a touch more on the middle, but we're almost there, very, very close, almost passable I'd say, I don't know if that's going to show up. So in the very centre it needs just a little, the world's smallest crack. Figure out the best way to do this, put it back in. Somewhere around about. Wanna know why rust rares are time consuming? It's exactly what we're doing now, just the a lightest crack. Oh, oh, oh. Or you can compare it with this side, either or. In theory, we need to just go a little bit more. Obviously, I didn't quite crack it enough that one second. Push it into the middle. Because I'm a bit of a tubby guy, I'll just give it a little bit of help in the middle. Do that if you're skinny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, perfect, absolutely perfect. I don't, I don't know if I can show you this. In the, is this going to show up? This may or may not. Right now, the next thing to do is work out where the center of the next fold is, which is like effectively there and we've got to send it back the other way but what I'll do is so the video isn't six million times long um, we're going to do exactly the same process but here fold it back the other way and then we're going to trim this down to the size we need but that's effectively that first fold and this is where all your spot welds or the factory spot welds but where your plug welds will go when it goes back into the car so that's the first fold done and not too shabby so we'll catch up in a second. Well, chaperoonies, I think this is going to wrap up this video for today. It's already probably excessively long and possibly not super interesting. But we've now replaced that end, half of, well, over half of the middle lip, the two bits in here, that whole corner, a good chunk of that. So we're progressing along quite nicely. I've got a couple little, um, yeah, little holes there to fix and a little bit there but that's it and then this panel can go back in so I'm pretty stoked about that um, this ended up being far worse than I ever thought possible it's still a little bit funky just in this region here and that's because it was crushed in an accident at some point but the really bad bit that was through the middle here is now gone and resembles the rest of it so all of that was well, as you probably saw was crushed up on itself so that's really nice so now this, uh, well I guess it's almost a filler panel or a gutter piece, uh, I don't really know. But that bit is the top bit, that's done. So in the next video we'll be putting that side back in, all that together and then the top back on and then that'll be it for this wagon for a while uh, until the customer brings it back. So um, thanks for watching if you made it through this far and you weren't bored out of your brain. Um, kudos and sorry I was meant to put this video out a day or so earlier but um, you know life gets in the way and I didn't want to put out a video at like midnight I've done that a few times and surprisingly I get quite a lot of views at stupid o'clock in the morning um, which is good I guess but um, yeah I just wanted to get this out get this done and just get I mean this took way longer than I thought just fixing this piece because there was so much rust in it but you know and it, there's a good idea you can actually sort of see how I was talking about the whole thing looks curved it's very obvious in these two lines here where it's, it looks like a big honk, honking radius so it must be ever so slightly swooping um, because I didn't really change any of that especially those areas they're still original and that would be very hard to um, fold that into a different shape so interesting I guess oh, unless of course 
um, that just happens to be how it is in its natural form and when it's in the car it sort of straightens out which is entirely possible as well but I don't know I can just I can only do as good as my talent takes me and I'm not a magician I uh, don't go tooting my own horn I just try and show walk everybody through the repairs and um, give helpful tips and tricks along the way and those who are wondering there's the XB you haven't seen it for a while because <laughs> I haven't done anything on it for a while, you've got to sort of, if it, there's nothing wrong, don't fix it. That car is, oh my god, reliable. Um, it's just incredible. What I did was clean the windscreen. I do need to put a windscreen in this car soon, as there's a couple of chips on the other side. But aside from that, it is just bulletproof reliable. Pretty darn happy with that. But as the sun is setting, I'm going to pack up and I'll see you on the next episode. Um, we'll probably do another one on this, which is ready to be painted, and then that can go for its trip to Regency, after its trip to the tread shed for some tires and a wheel alignment. Then it can go to Regency, and then it can go back on the road as a lovely vehicle. And then we'll get back into the 50k challenge ute, where we'll need to pull the tray off and start tackling some of those dents. So a lot is going on, um, and I just hope it's interesting. <laughs> but anyway, stay tuned for more. Thank you for watching.